We all know how learning to identify elite wave patterns changed our view of how prices unfold. All of a sudden, we have market context. That was an eye-opening experience that I bet we can all still recall. The history of price action matters. It lays out the foundation for the direction of the coming trend, whether it's long or short term. So we know if we have an impulsive advance followed by a choppy pullback, that chances are the following leg is going to be toward the upside. Speaking of short term, in the intraday commodity service, we rely on the elite wave principle to plot the probability of the next move. But while the elite wave principle is the most powerful tool for forecasting future price action, we still need to identify potential support and resistance levels to anticipate where reversal may coincide. Using momentum indicators along with any other classical technical tool in your arsenal might help, Japanese candlesticks of course plays a role too, or even point and figure charts. But the most accurate tool that I've used for the past 10 years identifying elite wave patterns, hands down, is the Fibonacci tool. Both the retracement and the projection tools. I guess the main reason why they are so powerful is because they have been used since the dawn of elite wave analysis. Ralph Nelson Elliott even said that the Fibonacci sequence provides the mathematical basis for the wave principle. There are some great online courses if you want to get in-depth details about them, especially the two courses made by Wayne Gorman in our online courses library. So Fibonacci tools are great, but what is even greater and more robust, and the reason why I'm here today, is combining these tools to come up with a Fibonacci cluster. So what is a Fibonacci cluster? A Fibonacci cluster is when multiple Fibonacci retracement or projection levels exist in proximity of each other, as we will soon discuss. Today's market is wheat, which we extensively cover in the intraday commodity service. Back in early September, we were tracing a corrective retreat from the 786 high, and this is the 4-hour chart that we published on the 2nd of September. The operative count back then suggested that a zigzag wave 2 is underway, and that we can identify a 5-wave decline for wave C. So let's view that on our interactive chart. Here's the 5-wave decline from the top of wave B. So at that stage, it was possible that wave 2 has ended here at that low. Typically, second waves ends between the 50% retracement level and the 61.8 retracement level. So while we can't say that the second wave is a shallow retracement, we have to be wary that it's possible that we still have lower lows in store. And remember that we always need the market to commit to us before we commit to the market. So we need to trace a smaller degree 5 wave advance above the high of wave B to gain confidence in the idea that a bottom is in place and that wave 3 has started. Few hours later, wheat created a 3 wave pullback before registering a lower low for the move. And it was clear at this stage that wave 2 was not unfolding as a zigzag, so we switched to the alternate scenario that wave 2 is still unfolding, but as a double zigzag correction. So let's delete that ABC, look for our combination W, X, and Y. That suggested that waves W and X are complete, and that wave Y is unfolding toward the downside. Now is the time to read to our Fibonacci studies, but what do we know so far about this wave 2? The high probability is that it's not a simple zigzag, and so far it has retraced 50% of the previous advance from the law of wave B. The first conclusion here is that we have an area of support between 702 and 783 where it may coincide with the end of wave 2. But we also have waves W and X, and we can project the equality between waves W and Y. So, drawing that projection level. Oh, and by the way, you can find the Fibonacci tools if you right click on tools Fibonacci here in MotorWave. But I believe that any modern trading platform has these tools. And maybe the expansion tool on your platform is called projection or extension tool. But here in MotorWave, it's, we are using the retracement and the expansion tools right now. So, back to our expansion tool. We draw that expansion to from the high of wave 1 to the end wave W and then wave X, we discover a Fibonacci cluster in this area right here between the 61.8 retracement level for wave 2 and that equality between waves Y and W. So we set our eyes on that zone. 
and see how prices unfold. Putting the key level at that high, as eclipsing that high, would cloud the double zigzag picture that we are tracing. On the 9th of September, this is the chart that we published, and that double zigzag count suggested that Wave 2 has lower lows in store, and that strong support exists in the Fibonacci cluster area between 683 and 677. Back to our interactive chart, we can still go to a smaller time frame, say the hourly chart which we also publish, along with the 4 hour chart, and looking at that chart, We can trace a 5 wave decline to complete wave A followed by a 3 wave advance for wave B. So let's draw that here. Let's look for a correction. A, B, and C. Then, to label the impulse waves within wave A, we have waves 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. waves A, B, and C for wave B, we expect a 5 wave decline to complete wave C. We can see that we have wave 1 and 2 complete, and that wave 3 is in its late stages. So let's draw that. Fast forward a few hours. At this stage, we can make the case that both waves 3 and 4 are complete, and that the final leg of wave C of wave Y wave 2 is underway, which means that if we are on the right track, we want to see a final depth toward the downside before completing wave 2. Here we can use a common relationship between wave 1 and wave 5, which is that 5th waves tend to equal its first waves price-wise. So let's use our Fibonacci expansion tool to see where 5 would have equaled wave 1. By drawing that Fibonacci projection, we come up with a new potential objective which lies at the same area at 676 and a half, and by now we can see that all of our Fibonacci studies converge around that support zone. That doesn't guarantee that reversal is going to happen around that area, but that gives us a huge clue to keep a close eye on that level as price action unfolds. Fast forward a few hours. We noticed that we located support at exactly 677 before advancing in a sharp manner. And the following price action confirmed that a significant bottom has been registered. That's all for me today. Hope you enjoyed this quick example as much as I enjoyed preparing it. This was Nadi Laimud, the Intraday Commodity Service Analyst here at Elite Wave International.